in the last stream, we were working on setting up this automation right here to allow us to essentially duplicate call cook and regular call utilizing the sawmill and the power generated by our freshly built water wheel, which is currently producing 88 redstone flux per tick. Between streams, I have gone ahead and built two more of these water wheels. So we now have three identical water wheels all set up with their kinetic dynamo, all producing 88 redstone flux per tick to allow us to expand out our base and utilize more power throughout the course of today's stream. Because what I want to work on today is kind of twofold. I initially want to start working on getting these external heaters up and running because right now we just have the one, but ideally I want to get multiple of those external heaters so that we can have all of our furnaces here fueled by the water wheel so we can stop relying on coal for this. And then secondarily, I also at some point want to look at upgrading our burner researchers here to regular researchers that can use power from the water wheels instead of requiring coal for every single recipe so that we can then potentially look towards automating the production of this logistics research using just the iron plates and the conveyor belts along with a very small amount of power, in this case 10 Fe per tick. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, First things first, over here, the coke oven is full. And uh, between streams, I have been emptying this out using the reservoir to build these extra water wheels. But if we want to keep this system going and if we want to get more coal and more coal coke, we need a way to store the creosote oil, but also to delete any excess creosote oil. So there are things we can do here. The first is that we can get the tank from immersive engineering. So this here is the multi-block tank from Immersive Engineering, and this can hold up to 512 buckets of any given fluid, which is pretty good, and it's really not too difficult to make. It requires four treated wooden posts, which we have, along with 34 iron sheet metal. The iron sheet metal, as we've seen before, is just iron plates crafted. We are running a little bit low on inventory space here, which is not particularly great. There are a few things we can do, the first thing that we could do here is we could make a gold to diamond chest upgrade. That does require six glass, though, and currently we don't have any glass, which is uh, is problematic. Alternatively, what we could do is we could just make another chest. Right now, we do have individual Minecraft chests. We can upgrade these uh, using iron to make iron chests. And then if we had eight gold, we could also upgrade that to a gold chest. The only trouble there is that we don't have eight gold. So I guess for the time being, a second iron chest is going to have to do we'll place that down right about here for the time being and we should probably think about uh, looking into getting some kind of better storage system at some point fairly soon i'll put a lot of the stuff that we don't really use too much like cobblestone marble dirt stone all that kind of stuff into here and try and keep a lot of the crafting recipe ingredients in uh, this chest because we do have of course our crafting station here and our crafting station can pull directly from that chest but uh, either way as i was saying we just need some more iron ingots that we can turn into iron plates and then into iron sheet metal i'll also grab a bunch of the iron and copper out of there to keep that whole system running smoothly over here let's take our engineer's hammer and some iron ingots and then we needed 34 iron sheets now you do make the uh, iron sheet metal in sets of four four iron plates gets you four iron sheet metal and so we're going to have to get 36 iron sheet metal which means 36 iron plates once we've got those we can go boom 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 and boom that gets us all the sheet metal that we need apparently we already had some in here we did that is completely fine and with that we should now be good to go to build this silo so over at the back here i'm going to build it behind the coke oven because again i do want to put down more coke ovens in a line here to help make this setup just a little bit faster and so over here we are just going to do one two three four i think that is right if we hit uh stop here and then pause we can do this kind of level by level so yeah the bottom level has the posts down with the sheet metal in the center like that we can then hit the uh, up arrow one at a time and this goes one two three four up that is completely fine so we're going to do one level one like this and then two like this three like this and then the fourth level here is just filled in completely and i think that is good to go if we now right click with the engineer's hammer boom we have a fluid tank 
Nice. And uh, we just need now to be able to pump out of the cook oven into the fluid tank, which is actually a little bit more difficult than it initially seems, because I think the way that we're going to have to do that is utilizing the fluid pumps that we got as a quest reward a few episodes back. Uh, currently, these are labeled as unfamiliar items, and that is because we have yet to hand in the research for the fluid pump. Thankfully, we do have almost a stack of logistics research ready to go, and so we can just very quickly use eight of those to get ourselves the ability to actually use these fluid pumps without them just falling out of our inventory onto the ground. And now that we have that unlocked, it should just be a case of us taking the pump, placing it onto the coke oven. In this case, I'm just gonna place it down directly on top, let's say right about here, although I'm pretty sure that anywhere would work. We then, I believe, want to right click here and make sure this is set to output. You can see at the top that it says facing side output. And again, you'll see there is a little point at the top of the tank there. I'm pretty sure that that is where we want to pump our creosote to. So if I do something like this, uh, by the way, you can right click with the hammer to disconnect those points. I don't think it matters. I don't think that the creosote would go back in, but uh, just for aesthetic reasons more than anything else, if we do something like this, we now have a pipe that goes from the fluid pump up around and into the fluid tank you can power this. You'll notice there is a power pot on top and it does have a capacity to hold power. However, I am fairly certain that it doesn't require power. I think it just moves fluids faster if you provide it with power. I'm fairly certain that all we need to do here is take a lever and then apply that to the fluid pump and it should begin moving the creosote out of the coke oven here and round into this fluid tank. So if I do something like this, you'll see that the creosote is now moving out and around and into the fluid tank. Nice. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have built this like one further over to the right just to line it up with the coke oven. Uh, but to be fair, if we wanted to, we could always just move the coke oven over by one as well to align it with the fluid tank, which is potentially something I'll do in the not so distant future. This obviously is eventually going to fill up. And so we do uh, need to think about that and uh, probably set up something like a nullifier here. This is essentially a block that will just delete anything that you place into it, whether that's items or fluids. And so we could put one of those down and I'm fairly certain that the way that the pipes from immersive engineering work is that they will try and pump the liquid into the nearest inventory first. So if we were to continue this pipe along and then put a nullifier somewhere down here, I'm fairly certain that all of the creosote would try and go in the tank first and then eventually would work its way around into the nullifier to be deleted. But for the time being, I think we've got quite a while before that tank fills up. It does hold uh, like 512 buckets, which is a staggering amount of buckets for uh, where we are currently in the game. And so instead, let's pivot over and let's see if we can't fix up our coal usage here on our ore processing. So I am going to go ahead and take this and this. We are going to need more of these uh, LVY connectors. We're also going to need more external heaters, although you can put multiple furnaces onto one external heater. You can put really as many as you can fit around it. So for example, we could have the power go into the top like this, and then we could put uh, four furnaces around this and potentially a fifth one on the bottom as well. So I might end up changing kind of the layout of the furnaces here. I think I am still gonna keep the minecart system because it does a good job at distributing. Although to be fair, now that we have access to the item conduits from Ender.io, we probably can retire this minecart setup and potentially repurpose this minecart for bringing copper back because right now our copper is all the way over there we could do with uh, setting up a minecart to quickly bring that copper over to us and add it to the uh, the chest that's being distributed so i am probably here going to do a couple of things first things first i think i'll make a second external heater they're really not too difficult to make and having two of these is going to allow us to use up to eight furnaces for or processing, which I think is a good amount for where we are at currently. We can use four of those for iron and four of those for copper. And then once we have that, the next thing I'd like to do is potentially get some posts from immersive engineering. These are pretty nifty. They do require more creosote. You can also make them out of steel as well, but steel is substantially more expensive. Speaking of steel, one of the things I am going to do now before I forget is just quickly grab a few stacks of iron and try and get a bunch more steel cooking here just so that we have it ready to go for later on in the episode because I do think that we're going to need some more 
of the uh, mechanics research, which of course is uh, is extremely steel hungry. So real quick, let's grab a little bit of the excess coal that we're producing here. Really, so long as we leave like at least one coal in there, the system will keep going. We can take all that excess coal and uh, use it over here for the blast furnace. So let's do something like this, like this, and like this. Again, it is more efficient if we use coal coke there, so we should probably just get a lot more coke ovens to make that happen. But um, now that's taken care of, let me grab some creosote out of our big tank here. I think, if I'm not mistaken, we might just be able to right click on the bottom here. We totally can, and that's gonna pull a bunch of buckets out and into our reservoir. From there, we can then craft that up into some treated wood just as soon as we actually get some more wood because I have managed to use all of our reserves on making water wheels between streams. A little bit of oak wood later, and we can of course craft that down into yet more treated wood. Fantastic. From there, we can craft up some more of these treated wooden fences, and we can then use these to craft up these wooden posts, which are not strictly necessary. They also do require some more regular stone, which I believe we were smelting up in here. Actually, we've got a bunch on us. Am I using the wrong... Oh, I need stone bricks. I see. That's fine. We could do something like this, and then we can do something like this. So these are not strictly necessary, but I think they're going to make it a little easier for us to wire up our base. For example, if I put one of these here and I put one of these here, we can then use these as posts to put our wire connectors onto. So right now we have the uh, the one LV wire relay there. I'm pretty sure that we do have at least one more LV wire relay over in here. We do indeed. And I'm also fairly certain that we have more insulated wire. We do. So the idea here is that we can go ahead and put down this LV wire relay onto the post and i think you can actually climb these you totally can like ladders and so if i put this here like this we can then connect this to this and it just allows us to run our wiring overhead as opposed to uh, over here where we've just got it on the ground of course when it's insulated it's not too big of a deal because you can walk through it but if we wanted to we could have used uninsulated wire here because there's very little chance that we actually run into it and then, of course, as we go further out, we can take even more of these posts and uh, just run those along. So if I put another one down, like here, we can then put another one of the LV wire relays onto this and then connect that one to this one. And it's just going to make transferring all of the uh, power from the water wheels to, for example, our external heaters just that little bit easier. And I'm also fairly certain that if you use your engineer's hammer, you can actually right click on the side of these like that. Um, I think that was a visual glitch there because um, I'm not quite sure what that was about, but you can right click and usually you get, that's it. There we go. It took a second. But uh, if you right click, you get like this little uh, arm here that comes out. And I'm pretty sure you can do this on multiple sides. Again, if I uh, quickly reload, there we go. I'm not quite sure why that's, um, <laughs> why that's broken like that, but uh, you can do something like this and uh, that allows you to connect multiple different points on one post. I also think it looks pretty cool as well and so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to quickly tear down this setup almost in its entirety and we'll look at repurposing it because we also don't need this uh, cart either for collecting from the furnaces instead we're just going to use item conduits i think to extract from and insert to basically everything that is there especially because these are really not too difficult to make the only downside is the fact that they require glass but if we're happy to sacrifice the engineer's hammer that we have here we can get a fair bit of gravel and then if we were to make a second engineer's hammer like this we could then go ahead and turn all of that gravel into sand and then if we get that sand smelting over here whilst we're working on tearing this down and replacing the furnaces down around the external heaters here we could then uh, hopefully craft up a bunch of these uh, item conduits using the steel from our blast furnaces to get all of the uh, ores into and all of the ingots out of these furnaces all right so i've torn down all of the cart contraption or almost all of the cart contraption i guess because this is still here but once we got rid of this we uh, now have a lot more space and so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to place down these two external heaters i mentioned it last time but if you just place it down then the power port faces towards you every time if you shift and then place it down the power port will always face away from you like that uh, so what we want to do here is we want to just jump 
like this, and that's gonna put the power port facing up because we're not holding shift. And so what we should now be able to do is hopefully craft a few more of these LVY connectors. That is gonna require more stone, which I have placed in here. And we're gonna take those. We'll also, I'll make a few of these because we're gonna need loads of them. Um, I'll also make some more LVY relays as well. But uh, we're gonna take those. And I guess while I'm at it, I might as well also get even more of these LVY coils. And ideally, if we have the hemp for it, I might as well go ahead and insulate those so that we don't die. But uh, over here, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this. And then if we place this at the top of this post here, which we should be able to climb like that, we can then right click here, right click here, right click here and right click here. And now these are both ready to fuel up to four furnaces. And so if we grab some furnaces out of our chest, we have all eight that we need. And so we can do one, two, three and four. Can I rotate that using my engineer's hammer? No, unfortunately. Uh, and then we'll do one, two, three. And I kind of want to put this down in such a way that it faces the same direction as the other furnaces. Like that. It's a, it's a small thing, but I think it just makes it look a bit more consistent. So we'll get rid of this and then we'll uh, place that back down facing this way like that. And so now that we have all of those down, uh, these will get power just as soon as we do something like this and right click here and then right click here. Now these should start getting power from the water wheels and it should be good to go. Nice. So what we're now gonna do is we're gonna come back over here. In the time it took us to do all of that, we should now have a fair bit of glass over in this furnace here. We do indeed. I also did uh, top up the fuel on these blast furnaces. Those are still chugging away making more steel for us. Speaking of which, let's take half a stack of steel and let's make some more item conduits. Because here, and we're going to need at least uh, 16 of those. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to have four item conduits going to these furnaces. And it is going to have to be more than four. I guess we're going to have to do kind of a full loop like this to get to all those furnaces. And then we'll do the same on this side as well. We'll put all of these wires down. And we can then just have one centralized chest or one centralized drawer even at the top that's going to uh, store all of the ores. So let's come back over here. And one thing we've yet to do, but that we definitely should do is get started with uh, storage drawers. So storage drawers you're probably familiar with. They are single inventory devices that allow you to hold just a large amount of any one given item. So I'm gonna make two of these and we're gonna use one of these to hold all of our iron ore and one to hold all of our copper ore. Not that I expect at the minute we're gonna have a ton of excess copper and iron ore, but mostly just for organizational purposes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place down one drawer right about here. That's gonna store all of our iron ore. And then over here, we're gonna do the same thing again, but this is gonna store all of our copper ore. Then all of that copper and iron is gonna be extracted down. So we'll set this to extract, we'll set it to always active, and then we'll turn on round robin. I'm not gonna do that just yet, and you'll see why in just a second. And then once those are smelted, we can then extract from the bottom here. Again, we'll grab our item conduits, which I think I put away. And it looks like I did miscalculate how many we're going to need. That is fine. Uh, we are going on a bit of a journey in the background, but that's also not a problem. Let's do one, two, three, four, five and one, two, three, four, five, perfect. And then from there, we can actually do the same thing again, I think, if we get one more chest and two more drawers, we can have a final drawer for iron and a final drawer for copper. If we do this and this, so all of our iron ore is going to go into here, all of our copper ore is going to go into here, the iron will get processed into iron ingots, which will go here, and the copper will get processed, you guessed it, into copper ingots, which will end up here. So now that we have this set up, one thing I would like to do is I would like to get this uh, drawer key here. This is going to allow us to lock the storage drawer to one specific resource, in this case, uh, iron and or copper. So we'll put the iron ore in here, or we'll put the copper ore in here. And then once we have that last bit of gold, we can craft one of the gold ingots down into nuggets. And then if we get an upgrade template, which you make with a regular storage drawer, and some sticks. For that, I am going to need a little bit more in the way of planks because we, once again, need to make our fifth storage drawer of the day, which again, looks like 
this. And then from there, we can go ahead and craft up the upgrade template just as soon as we get some more Minecraft sticks. Eight is the number we need. Boom, 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 and boom. So the draw key here allows us to right click on the draw to lock it. And so now, even if you take all of the item in the draw out, it's going to stay locked to that. So right now I can take the iron ore out of there and it's still locked to iron ore. So nothing else that isn't iron ore can be put in there. Whereas if you don't lock it, you can put something in, take it all out and then put something different in. So now this is basically good to go. Up here, we're going to right click, extract, always active, round robin, enabled. In here, same thing, extract, always active, round robin, enabled. And then here, we just wanna make sure all of these are set to insert. You'll see right away, it took the copper out. And because we have that external heater in the center there, it's automatically smelting up all of the copper. And that copper should make its way down into the storage drawer. Once it does, we're then gonna go ahead and lock that storage drawer. Of course, to make that happen, we do need to set this to insert, and we need to set each one of these to extract always active. We don't need to bother with the round robin this time though, because there is only one final destination for that copper to go to, and boom, that's now locked. So now, if we set up a cart system that can pull all of the copper off from the drill over and send it to the copper draw here, we are basically gonna have fully automated copper. And of course we can do the exact same thing here with the iron. Real quick here, the Twitch chat is pointing out that it's probably a good idea for us to get the Yeta wrench here. This is from the same mod that adds the item conduits, uh, hides conduit faces when held, and we can shift left click on a conduit to open its settings. So I think uh, before I dug a hole here to get down to the bottom, if I uh, shift, not right click, if I put that back down, if I, Shift left click. Yes, okay, this is interesting because now I can select the, the side that connects to the drawer like this and set that to insert. I can then go back and again, shift left click. I can select the side that connects to the furnace, which is up and uh, set that to extract. Always active, again, no need for the round robin. And it just makes it a little easier because we don't have to dig into the ground to access the bottom of this furnace. That like that face that touches the bottom of the furnace, that is. Nice. Uh, let's quickly grab some of our iron ore, which is in here. And uh, let's give this a try, shall we? If I drop that in there, that should begin smelting all of that iron down into iron ingots. And you'll see because we have round robin, it's gone ahead and distributed all of that iron amongst all of the furnaces equally. Nice. So I think what I might do now then is um, I might go ahead and get the rails up and running to kind of connect everything up here. And somebody in the YouTube comments actually had a pretty good idea which was potentially to have like an underground rail network. So what I might do is I might have the cart kind of come up to the surface to get the copper, but then potentially go back down. And because we have our hammer here, I did make a diamond hammer between streams. We do have uh, quite a lot of diamonds available thanks to our drill that's all the way over in the distance over there. And uh, the diamond hammer is six times more efficient. It's got six times more durability than the iron hammer. So I might dig like a three wide tunnel all the way from the copper over to here, and then we can kind of deck that out and have our carts kind of loop around using that tunnel to get back and forth. And I think I might also look at uh, utilizing the stations from the signals mod and potentially even the cart engines as well from the signals mod to allow us to, uh, to kind of pick up both the iron ore and the copper ore in one trip. All right, so not too long later, and by that I mean quite a while later, we now have a underground minecart tunnel. So the idea here is that all the way up at uh, this end of the track, we have our copper drill. So right around the corner here is the copper drill. It is right there. And then this is the chest where all the copper ore is deposited. We are going to use item conduits to extract from that chest down into the cart hopper. And as the mine cart comes underneath here, it's gonna get filled up with copper, uh, however much copper is available. And then it's gonna keep going around. I've also gone ahead and found a new chunk for iron drilling, uh, iron ore drilling that is. So over here, we have yet another cart hopper. This is where our new iron ore drill is. So we're not using the same one we had previously. Uh, this currently is offline, but if I uh, go ahead and use the advanced ore scanner here, you can see that there are 4,500 iron ore pieces in this chunk and nothing else. So we're just gonna get iron ore from that, which is perfect. And then around the back here, we also have a, a third cart hopper. That one is around here. This one is above a piece of cobblestone. We'll get back to the reasoning for that one in just a second. 
But first things first, let's go ahead and see if we can't get this working. By the way, we also have uh, the carts, of course, going underneath this area right here. And the plan is to have the, um, the carts drop the stuff off underground. And then we're going to use conduits to pump the stuff up into uh, these basic drawers here. In fact, I might end up moving these drawers and uh, just have those underground and have the items pipe up into uh, the top of these furnaces via a pipe that goes behind this setup here. So if we're going to get this to work, we of course need carts. Thankfully, carts we have. We've got quite a few of them ready to go, so we can just reuse these. Uh, we're also going to start utilizing the signals mod a little bit more. There's a few things I want to do here. The first thing is I want to get this cart engine up and running. So to get a cart engine, we do need a block of gold. And so I did move the uh, drill here. This one was mining tin previously and uh, doing a pretty good job of it, actually. We do have um, a chest full of uh, tin and coal over here that we can access in the future. But right now, it's uh, drilling away. It hopefully has a few pieces of gold available. We uh, we do need nine gold per cart that we want to equip with the cart engine. The idea behind the cart engine here is, effectively, it allows you to do away entirely with powered rails. You can essentially power your minecart using coal. And given that we are producing an unlimited amount of coal over by our coal cook setup, I figured we might as well utilize this cart engine. And right here is the piece of cobblestone uh, above that last cart hopper. So the cart hopper is there. This cart hopper is going to be the cart hopper that refuels the minecart. So we're going to turn some of the coal that is being made here. You'll see we've got a stack here and a stack here. So we're now backing up fully on coal. We can take some of that coal, siphon it off, and craft it into tiny coal that we can then use as fuel for our carts to allow them to keep going around uh, to the different stops. So let me see here. How much gold do we have? We've got four more gold there. Let me get that into these furnaces as well. There's three, there's six, and uh, once two more is done, we will be good to go. We're also going to start utilizing these stations here because with these, we can specify a route that we want the carts to utilize. Now, to make stations, we do need a fair amount of green dye. As we saw before, we can get green dye by smelting tall grass. However, I don't think that five is going to be enough here. And so real quick, let me find my shears and let me just do a quick little bit of grass shearing and then we'll get all that smelting so we can make more stations and uh, also more of the block signals as well. Back over here, the gold is done. Fantastic. Let's get all of that smelting up. And so what we can do now is we can craft up a block of gold with a regular old Minecraft furnace, and that is going to get us the cart engine. Now, in order to use this, we are also going to need a rail configurator, which thankfully is not too difficult to make. And so now if we go and put a cart down onto our track here, like so, what we should be able to do is right click the cart engine into the track. And then if you right click the cart with the rail configurator, you can see the engine fuel tab on the right here. And so you can put coal into this. And then here on the left, we have the schedule. And so this is where the stations are going to come in useful because we can put stations down. Uh, we can dot them around where we want the cart to stop. And then we can tell the cart which stations to go to, kind of like a train schedule. And so if we have enough cactus green, which we do, we can make our first station marker. And I'm going to put that station marker down next to the copper or deposit. So right here, if we put this uh, station marker down, like so, we can then open this up and we can call this uh, copper pickup, like so. And now if we go back to our cart, we can tell the cart to go to copper pickup and then we're going to do the same. We're going to make another station and put that at iron pickup. And then finally, we'll also have a third station that's at... Uh, the coal pickup and the coal pickup is going to place the coal directly into the cart engine slot because I'm fairly certain that if I am not mistaken, we should be able to make another uh, cart hopper here. And the cart hopper does have an option. I'll make two of these because I think we're going to need it. Um, also, I should definitely get rid of this um, conveyor belt because we don't need it. But uh, I'm fairly certain that what we can do here is we can take our cart hopper and if we go and place that underneath where the tiny coal is going to come from, which is here. This one, we can set this to cart inventory or to cart engine. And we're going to set this to cart full and cart engine. And actually, we might set it to no activity and cart engine. Basically, that's going to start taking tiny coal out of whatever is up here, uh, probably a storage drawer, and it's going to put it into the engine slot inside of the cart. 
And then once there is no more tiny coal to transfer, which is either going to happen when we run out of tiny coal or when the uh, the slots in here fill up, once that's happened, then the cart will leave and we'll start going to its next station. So let me quickly grab at least two more station markers and let's get those down by the iron pickup and the coal pickup. All right, so I've put down a bunch more stations. If we open this up now, again, using the uh, rail configurator here, and we click here, you can see all of the different uh, options there. So we now have iron drop-off and copper drop-off. Those are these two here. So copper is going to get dropped off here, and uh, that's where we're going to have another one of these. And then iron is going to get dropped off here, like so. And then we're going to take the iron ore and the copper ore and send that to where it needs to go to be processed. So I think basically what I'm going to do here, I'm probably going to move this cart, but I want the cart to start by going to the refueling station. That is uh, around the corner where the uh, tiny coal is going to be. Then we're going to go to iron pickup. Then we're going to go to copper pickup. Then we're going to go to copper drop off. And then we're going to go to iron drop off. So to start with here, we are going to use just one cart for this. If we wanted to, we could have two separate carts, one that does the iron pickup and one that does the copper pickup. I don't think it's going to be strictly necessary. Um, also, I have um, done this incorrectly. We want this to be a minecart with chest. Can I just right click a chest onto the minecart to make it a minecart with chest? I uh, assume that's probably like a very silly question to ask to anybody who's played like any amount of vanilla Minecraft ever. But I uh, I didn't think that you could. But then again, when I took the cart away, I noticed that the chest just kind of popped off. So let me, um, if I do, uh, can I just put this in or do I need to craft it ahead of time? I need to craft it ahead of time. Okay, let me uh, pick this up then. We do get the uh, engine back, thankfully, so we can reuse that. But uh, essentially, what we're going to do here, we're going to make that into a, a minecart with chest, obviously. And then we'll put it down probably right about here. We'll put the engine back into it, which I dropped on the floor. Boom. And then in here, we'll do the same thing again. We'll say go to refueling first, then go to iron pickup, then go to copper pickup, then go to copper drop off, and then iron drop off. You could put these in any order, kind of, but like that's the order that that's the loop currently works in and so that's just a sensible order for it to uh, to go in and i think if i'm not mistaken if i just put some fuel in here like if i do this i think it might just start going yeah look at that so i think this should work now the question really is whether or not it's going to turn i am fairly certain that it can turn here even though like it wouldn't uh, you wouldn't think it normally would i'm going to wait and see as it comes around and see if it does do the turn you'll see it's keeping up its speed quite nicely despite the fact that we have zero powered rails at all let me see here though do you turn and go around that corner you don't which is interesting because i really thought it was gonna go around here to get to this station but apparently it's not doing that let me uh let me give this a a, a look and see if we can't uh figure out why Okay, so this works now. I uh, I just changed it. I picked up this piece and then uh, redid this piece. So now the loop is there. We don't really need this currently, this uh, line here, but um, but we can leave it there for now. That's fine. So it's going to all the stations and it's going to keep looping around so long as it has fuel. That is good. So now what we need to do though is we do kind of need to get it to stop at the different stations though, because right now it's just driving right past the stations, which is not what we want. So I think. What we should be able to do there is just drop down a powered rail. I think if I drop a powered rail down there, in here we can say uh, no activity and cart inventory. So this is going to move items into the cart inventory, and then as soon as there is no activity, again, either the cart is full or there's no more items to move, it's going to emit a redstone signal and the powered rail is going to send it on its way again. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it should stop on the powered rail here. It might be going a little bit too fast. Of course, to actually see if this is going to work, we do need to go and uh, get some item conduits so that we can hook up the uh, chest to the cart hopper. And the Twitch chat does make a fair point in that uh, we do need to move these cart hoppers to the underneath of the rail here, like that, to allow the, uh, the carts to actually pick up what's there. Boom, boom, boom. Again, we can use our Yeta wrench here if we... Uh, oh, I guess I can't do that. That's fine. I guess we're going to have to just make another chest here because the... Uh, I didn't know you couldn't pump directly into the uh, the cart hopper. That's fine. Let me go ahead and make this extract always active. And then here, we'll put this down. And then if we use our Yeta wrench and um, try and configure that to insert, that should start pulling all of the copper down to here. So here comes the cart. It should stop. 
it didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, is not ideal. Let me uh, let me troubleshoot this for a second and see if we can't figure out why that is not working. One thing that we might need here uh, to make this work, I'm not actually sure if they're needed, but uh, they are helpful nonetheless, is um, block signals. So block signals we do have, or at least we did make previously. That's fine. We can always make some more if, uh, if we don't have any lying around. These are fairly easy to make. They do require some stone, some more cactus green, and some redstone. Redstone we have, cactus green we're making, and then regular old stone we probably have lying around in here. We do indeed. Thankfully, these are made in sets of eight, which is very handy. So we'll take some of those. And essentially, these are going to allow us to segment parts of the track, which is going to make it a lot easier. And also, I should probably not put the uh, Yeta wrench in there. I'll put something that we don't need necessarily right now, like dirt and wood in there. But it's going to let us segment parts of the rail network to, uh, to stop any carts colliding, especially if we start adding more in the future. So the idea here is that uh, if we put, for example, one of these here and one of these here, and we, uh, we look at this, it creates a new segment to the rail, which is this little station bit here. So basically, uh, the rail network is now split into two sections, the gray section and the green section. If there is a cart in the gray section, this should stop it going in, but I think I actually want it this way because I'm going to have our carts going uh, around this way. So we're going to put it here and here. So right now, this is green. If there was a cart in this area, if I go ahead and put a cart here, this is going to go red, basically telling any cart coming this way that it has to stop until this is gone. So we can get rid of that now. There we go. And now it's green. We're going to do the same thing here as well. We're going to put a block signal here and a block signal here. Basically, if there is a cart at the station unloading, wait here and then go when it's ready. I think that might be what we need. Let me go and put these down around the different uh, stations that we have, and then let's see if that helps with the carts. So it doesn't matter where you put these, by the way. You can put them much further back. Like here on this side, I could put this, you know, quite far back here, and I could put the other one quite far forward. That just makes the uh, the area that much bigger that, uh, that the cart's not allowed into, which is completely fine. Okay, so all of the station markers are down. So let's go ahead and, uh, and send you off. You're going to get going through. Again, that's going to go red while there's um, a cart in there. Let me go and check, though, uh, if we can beat the cart there, which I don't know if we can. But let's see if it does stop at this station up here. If it doesn't, we might need some kind of limiter rail to, uh, to get it to slow down a bit. Although I feel like it should just stop. Yeah, it doesn't stop, which is interesting. Let me uh, see, in that case, about getting a limiter rail and see if that helps us here. These are not too expensive. They do require, though, a nether quartz. Thankfully, I'm fairly certain that uh, over here, this drill is in a chunk that has nether quartz. Perfect. And so we should, in that case, be able to fairly easily make six limiter rails here. And I think we just want to put a limiter rail before the... We might also need to go get some more redstone from our uh, local redstone deposit as well, because I think we are basically out of it now. We are, but uh, we can just put one of these before each of the powered rails that is next to the uh, the cart hopper. So I'll take these. Let me get one set of limiter rails, and then let me go put that before the powered rail that's under the cart hopper by the copper. I think that is going to slow the cart down enough. I think that's why these limiter rails... Uh, oh, I made the wrong one. I made the transport rail. I need to make the limiter rail. That is my bad. Let me go and quickly make the limiter rail, not the transport rail, and then, uh, and then I'll go put it down. Again, with the signals mod, you can just right click to, uh, to swap out a rail. So this should slow the rail down to a stop. So it should stop here. And then that should allow it to, uh, to transfer all of the, the copper ore out of it. I think the problem we were having before is that as soon as the cart got past the powered rail, as soon as it was past the station, it uh, instantly thought that it needed to go to the next station, which is true, and then just start going. So yeah, that <laughs> kind of works. It's still too slow. Does it need like a second limiter rail? I feel like it's not stopping correctly at the station. Despite the fact that I'm pretty sure it should be. Like it currently thinks it's trying to go to copper pickup. But copper pickup is here. And you've not gone there. And now it's going the wrong way. <laughs> all right, this is working. It took all the copper. Okay, we've figured out the issue. All right. So it turns out that the problem was speed. Again, we just put a second limiter rail down. The cart was gaining too much speed along this long straight. And so um, 
a second limiter rail did the trick. And so essentially, all we're gonna do now is we're gonna go around, we're gonna put uh, powered rails and I guess two limiter rails on each one of the stations that we have. And we're also gonna go and configure everything so that all of the uh, all the stuff moves in the right direction. And at that point we should chat, hopefully, be onto something. All right, so I've placed down all of the powered rails and all of the limiter rails. So each one of our stations has one powered rail and two limiter rails. I don't think, I think the number of limiter rails really depends on how fast the cart is going. So for example, over here, the cart turns a corner just before it gets to the station, which means the cart's probably going fairly slow already. We probably don't need two limiter rails here to slow it down enough, but I think that uh, having two limiter rails should be fine as well. So all we need to do now is we need to configure this section here so we need to and also get the tiny call in i guess for the fuel so let us go ahead and i'm going to steal these i'm going to pick this up and we're basically going to put this directly beneath the uh the cart hopper so if we dig down like this we should be able to grab this storage drawer and we're going to place that storage drawer right there and so now when the cart comes around it should stop here drop all of the copper that it has down into that drawer and then keep going and then we're gonna do the exact same thing of course with the iron we're gonna go and grab this iron here and we're gonna place that underneath the cart hopper for iron like that and so those should now both work of course currently we're giving the um the cart manual fuel uh, so it's not actually getting any from the refueling station refueling is its next stop if i send it this way It didn't get there, but it's going to iron. Iron doesn't have anything. And so that should be fine. We're going to say until no activity. Uh, obviously, we do need to set up the uh, item conduits here. We're going to do something like this. Make sure that there is set to extract. Always active. And then we'll bring that down. And we need to put another chest on top of there for all of that iron ore to go into. But then it should go pick up any copper that's been made. And the copper should get deposited down here. So there's no copper currently in that drawer. But as the cart comes around, it should stop at the station. And if it was going slow enough, it would have deposited all of the copper. Somehow it wasn't going slow enough, but also at the same time, this powered rail is currently powered. And so that feels like it's not right. Okay, so it turns out we ran into a second problem. The problem here, like this is working now, you'll see that it's uh, emptying out the copper and all the copper got emptied there. The problem is these block signals here. So this block signal is uh, emitting a redstone signal. So if I get rid of this, that goes away. That is fixable. It's just a little awkward. It means we're gonna have to move the station, I think, because otherwise there's not much that we can do here. I mean, you know what? Actually for now, this will be fine. It means we don't have a, um, a dedicated signal for this station. But currently we don't need it because, um, as I mentioned before, the way these block signals work, they essentially break the track up into different segments. And if there is a cart in the segment that another cart is trying to get into it, we'll stop it going into it, right? So um, right now, obviously, if there's a cart in the blue segment, then any cart that is in the brown segment won't be able to get into it. It'll just wait here. And then as soon as whatever cart is here leaves, then the next cart will go in. What we've got now, essentially, is right here we have created a new segment. That segment is the gray segment. It just so happens that that gray segment there goes all the way around to here. And so if there's any cart in any of this section here, then a cart won't be able to come in, but that's fine. That is completely fine, right? Like if there's a cart trying to get, if there's a cart here that's uh, depositing its stuff and there's another cart here, it won't be able to get past this signal until that cart gets to the refueling station. But that is fine. That's not a problem at all. So I'm pretty sure that this is working. I am going to swap this again, because for whatever reason, this doesn't seem to be working. Uh, let's do this and let's do this. And then let's head up to the surface and let's get the tiny call automation up and running. For that, it's basically going to be the exact same setup we had previously. So we're going to take another one of these uh, auto workbenches and I guess we'll also make another storage drawer as well. And we're just gonna have some of the coal going from the sawmill, go around into an auto workbench. It's gonna craft it into tiny coal. And then we'll have that tiny coal going to a, a drawer here that then pumps down into, actually, I guess we could probably just have the uh, the workbench here. 
the auto workbench, and then we can have the draw for Tiny Cold directly above that hopper that's going to feed fuel into the cart. All right, so this should now be working. Um, all I've done here is I've added down the auto workbench. This is set to insert over here. This is set to extract round robin. And so it's going to divide between these two. Obviously, if this is full, it's just going to send all of them to here. That is completely fine. And uh, as we add more coke ovens, it'll distribute between all of them and the auto workbench. This is going to make tiny coal. And then down here, that tiny coal is now ready to be deposited into the cart as it comes around. And so we should see that cart come around that if we check on it, at any point, here it is. It should stop, hopefully, if it's going slow enough. It did, because the uh, the hopper is just real fast. So it took all the tiny call out of there and sent it to where it needed to go. I'm gonna go ahead and lock that just to be safe. The Twitch chat does make a good point in that round here, we can probably fix our station issue in that uh, this here probably doesn't need to be here. The, the second limiter rail, because the cart is already going to be going fairly slow after this. It's not gonna be going super fast, so we can probably do a block signal here and here, if we did want to uh, add like a separate little area for the iron drop-off, which I think is completely fine. And so the kind of final piece of this puzzle currently is just gonna be to, uh, to get the iron section taken care of. So let me quickly grab a chest, let me put some fuel into the iron drill, and then we'll see if we can actually get some iron into this drawer. And then from there, we'll also run item conduits from the copper drawer and from the iron drawer up and around to the top of these furnaces, and that is gonna be good to go. All right, so iron ore is coming in here. That is perfect. Once again, uh, you know, we're learning as we go here, but the Twitch chat is right in that we actually don't need four block signals here. Three block signals would do the trick because now we essentially have the segment before the copper drop-off. We then have the copper drop-off, which here is in light blue, and then we have the iron drop-off, which is in dark blue. And you'll see the iron to get dropped off there. Again, the cart hoppers work very fast, so sometimes it's going to look like they just drive right over, but that is indeed working as intended. Uh, the same is true here. It goes right past it, but it does refuel. So... This is now working as intended. We basically have a somewhat convoluted, but in my opinion, pretty cool system that is going around and collecting all of the wares. It's also a fairly flexible system in that if we go and find a chunk that has like nickel in it, for example, we can just add it to the pre-existing current cart network and then either have our current cart stop off at another stop to collect nickel, or if we wanted to, we could also just add another cart that goes to refueling and then nickel pickup and nickel drop off. So adding more in in the future should be fairly straightforward. The, uh, the only final thing left to do here is to make a couple more item conduits, which require both steel and glass, both of which we have some amount of left. Let's do this and this. And then as I mentioned a second ago, basically all we're going to do here is we are going to go ahead and pump from the drawers underground up around and into here so what we should be able to do we can disconnect this because that's not where we want it to go and with the yetter wrench i think we can shift maybe just right click here actually yeah to disconnect that and then we're just going to run that down we'll do the same here we'll run this all the way up like that we're going to right click here to disconnect that we're going to right click here and disconnect that and then now let's just go down and hook those up and set them to extract on the drawers underneath these carts hoppers so again the conduit is just going to come all the way down like that ideally without any uh, torches and then we're going to collect it up here this one here is copper we can then go ahead set that to extract always active that's going to start pulling the copper hopefully out around and into the respective furnaces for copper which is ideal and then we can just do the same thing with iron again extract always active that should start getting extracted it is indeed fantastic and with that we are pretty much good to go the only thing now that our cart system is not doing and that is currently not being done at all i guess is currently and i guess we can uh, probably fully just cover these up actually the only thing that's not being done now is we're not sending fuel to our drills which is a problem because it means that currently our drills are only going to work until they run out of their pre-assigned fuel and so what we can do and what we probably will do is we can add a second cart to this network that is in charge of giving fuel to all of the drills so if we get a second cart we can have that one go to the refueling station over by the refueling station what i might do is i might add a second station because we kind of want to use the tiny coal both for powering the carts but also for powering the drills and so what i might do is i might set this here to round robin so it extracts out and then if we get a second draw somewhere around here with a second station we could then have this cart hopper put things into the cart engine to refuel both carts but then we could have a second cart hopper and the chat is right here actually this is another case of the block signal uh breaking the redstone functionality here we actually want to do that but uh, we could have a different station here 
and that station is not going to be used by the cart that's currently picking up ore. Instead, it's going to be used by the cart that is giving coal to all of the drills. And so we'll have a second cart that refuels here for its internal coal engine, and then comes around here and picks up more tiny coal, but that time puts it into its inventory. It's then going to take that tiny coal and uh, deliver it to the drills. So I'll come over here, we'll have... Uh, a second station, although I guess we could probably actually here use the same station because we could potentially have another cart hopper underneath this rail that's going to pull out of it. We could run into some potential situations where one of the cart hoppers triggers the rail before the other one's finished, but I don't think that's going to matter too much because things are not coming in that quickly. And uh, essentially, we could use a second cart here to distribute coal to the two drills we currently have. And again, going forward, as we get more drills, we can use that second cart to, uh, to power those as well with coal, at least until we get to the point where we start utilizing the power drills, which are attainable, but do require 150 RF per tick each, which currently would be 300 RF per tick. And currently with our three water wheels, we're only producing about 240, maybe 250 some RF per tick. So even if we used all of the water wheel power we have, we still couldn't power three drills. And of course, that doesn't factor in all of the other stuff in the base that is currently utilizing power. So I think between streams, I might look at uh, just setting up that uh, fueling cart just to have it ready to go for next time because it's mostly the same as what we've just done here. Next time, we'll come back and I want to look at fully automating research. I think we can get the upgraded researcher super easily. It's just 32 logistics research. In fact, we can probably do that right now if we just go and do something like this, submit. And uh, now we have the ability to build just a standard researcher that doesn't require fuel. We can hook that up using our LV connectors and of course more of these wooden posts. We can get those built, we can tear these down and we can look at uh, setting up something like a metal press to automate the production of both iron plates and copper gears. The iron plates, of course, required for the logistics research and the copper plates are required for the conveyor belts, which are also required for the logistics research. And so if we can get two metal presses up and running, we can hopefully automate logistics research fairly easily. And then after that, we can then look at potentially upgrading the blast furnaces, trying to automate that as well once we've got like the iron fully automated, which we currently almost do. Of course, we do need to get that fueling automated. But once we have that automated, then we can look at uh, automating steel and from there automating the second tier of research. And at some point, we also want to look at getting more efficiency out of our ore processing. Right now, we're just smelting. But if we wanted to, we could also look at getting something like a pulverizer. The pulverizer in this pack has a 2.5x multiplier. And so we would essentially get 2.5 iron ingots from every iron ore, which is, you know, 2.5 times more than what we're currently getting, which would be ideal. And uh, we can also multiply that further using like this uh, flux anodizer upgrade for the redstone furnace and, uh, and all kinds of stuff like that. But those are all problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Feed the Factory there.